Welcome in to the DNBR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNBR when you sign up for a new account with them. I'm Rudo, joined as always by AJ Hayfley. Is it time to panic, AJ? Are, are we freaking out on this show or are we cool, cool calm, collected, ready to talk about this madness? Uh, I mean, I don't do a lot of freaking out. That's true. You're not a freak outer. Freaker outer? Freaker outer. You're not a freaky Friday. I, I think you are a freaky Friday fan, if I remember correctly. But body switching movies. Yeah. They rock. <laughs> Hopefully there is no body switching involved in Gabe Landis God getting a contract signed. But Obviously, plenty of rumors have been swirling about Gabe Landeskog and the Colorado Avalanche not being particularly close on signing a contract deal with the expansion draft now just a week away uh, and then free agency about a week after that. Is it concerning? Is this a serious concern for you, AJ, or are you not worried at all? Um, I'm really just not that concerned about it yet. All right. Um, I've said I wasn't going to start freaking out. I wasn't going to get too worried about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Until other teams can talk to them. Um, depending on the expansion list, that might be Sunday. Uh, if they protect him, then it's the 28th. Yep. Um, so it really just kind of depends on what they do with that uh, that list. So, so it know. could be it could be a couple more weeks of uh, wait and see territory. Unfortunately, this guy this guy that wants to fire me is going to have to get over it, bro. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. You're stuck with me for the long haul. So thanks for watching, bro. <laughs> um, I'm not out of Twitter jail. Not yet. Maybe someday. Yeah. Uh, the Twitter has not given me the opportunity to go before their uh, their tribunal and plead my case. <laughs> so, you've been we'll voted off. Yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's kind of funny that it's happening right now. Like this could have happened in August, and I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But with all the news that's about to break in the next two weeks, it's like interesting timing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, about the Landeskog stuff, um, I'm I'm really I a little more concerned today than I have been at any point, just because now Landeskog has spoken with the media. Sure. Which I'm saying he's a little disappointed it's taken this long. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that there is no way that you can spin that into a positive. For sure. No way you can spin that into a positive. That is only a bad thing. That not only is he willing to talk to the media, but that's the quote that he gives. Uh, the I can't help but be honest with you that I'm a little bit disappointed that it's gotten this far and it's had to come to this point. And that's Landis Cog, as quoted by Peter Baugh in The Athletic today. That's, dude... That's not great. That's not encouraging. Does not sound very good. Definitely not. The one, the one thing that I think stood out to me in that piece uh, from Peter was when he says Landis Gog wants long term security. Okay. Yeah. I think I think that that is always that was always going to be part of the grinding out of the negotiations in this contract is, look, he's 28 years old. We've talked about it. Yep. We did an entire show dedicated to breaking down the ins and outs of a potential contract for Gabe Landeskog in this whole situation. His age was a huge part of that. A seven-year contract takes him deep into his 30s. You are hoping that he goes against all aging curves and he just ages very well. A seven-year deal would take him to age 35. And particularly someone of his build, someone that plays the way that Gabe Landeskog plays, that goes to the front of the net, that, let's face it, on that top line, he's the guy that has to do a lot of the dirty work down deep in the offensive zone. Yeah. 
you're not shocked when you see guys like that start to sputter as they get into their 30s because their bodies just can't keep it up anymore. Yeah, and there are a lot of guys that do age well. I mean, do you, do you remember not that long ago when Joe Pavelski was a free agent and we were all kind of sitting around wondering? He got a three-year deal from Dallas, and we were all wondering, okay. yeah. how's that deal going to age? And it's gone wonderfully for them. Yep. They, 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 they got away with that deal. They rolled that dice, and it has gone well for them. But... With Landis Gog, I mean, you do you. It is fair to wonder. It's not even just Landis Gog. It's every player ever that begins to approach thirty. You you start to wonder how's this guy going to age? What's he going to look like in five or six years? Six years from now, is Landis Gog still going to be worth the money that he's going to make? Yeah, I, you know, if you sign him to a six, seven, eight year deal, if you give him an eight year deal, what's it going to look like? You know, if he really starts to fall off the wall, I mean, what you're afraid of here is the Louis Erickson, Milan Lucic. You're essentially ending up with dead cap at the end of that contract. Yeah, I mean, you look at you look at Jeff Skinner right now. Jeff Skinner was a has been a thirty goal guy multiple times in his career, and he's about to be left unprotected in the expansion draft with no chance he gets taken. Yep. So it's. There, I think term is probably more than money. Keeping keeping this uh, this negotiation where it is, you know the 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 money. I think that they could probably find common ground on. There's a lot of there's a lot of comparables out there. You know, I wonder how much the the Nugent Hopkins deal kind of kind of tossed a monkey wrench into the money a little bit because we were talking about six. Six to eight, somewhere in there, yeah. is where we expected it. I mean, to, how many to times fall. on this show have we talked about it would be good for the abs if they could get it under seven, right? Yeah, and Anders Lee at seven by seven is a has been a fair comparable all along. Although the RNH deal got signed, and immediately you're like, well, those are two really statistically comparable players. Yep. Now that guy's making five million dollars. He took a he took a almost a million dollar pay cut. Yep. So it's you know I just think that it's it's a it's a tough it's a tough spot to be in. I mean they you have to and, and like the reality is if you're looking at importance to the team, how much more important is Gabe Landeskog than say Philip Grubauer? Sure. Obviously, with Kale McCarr, you're like Kale McCarr's the future. Yeah. You have to kind of you have to kind of be prepared to give the world to Kale McCarr. McCarr gets a blank check, more or less. Yeah, but if you're trying to win a if you're trying to win a Stanley Cup, Gabe Landeskog is on your top line right now. Is he going to be on your top line for the life of that contract? Maybe, maybe not. Phil Grubauer is he going to be your starting goaltender? You're planning for that. You know which guy? Which guy do you absolutely need to be at his absolute best? Which guy is would be more important to a cup run? I mean, from it's a, hard to say. I honestly, if it were me, from a strictly on the ice standpoint, I think it's Philip Grubauer. I, based on a cup run, a goaltender just is has the potential to certainly bring more value. It also has the potential to implode your team. I think a lot more than. Any one skater can, barring a, a Nathan McKinnon level talent. Which don't get me wrong, Landis Gog's a great player. He's not providing Nathan McKinnon level impact on the ice. Yeah. With that being said, yeah, he's the face of your franchise, yes. and he's your captain, and he's been your heart and your soul for ten years. Right. That that was strictly on the ice, off the yeah. ice. Those type of things, Landy is invaluable to the organization, basically. Um, look, we've talked a lot over the last couple of years about the great locker room they've built here in Colorado, and a lot of that starts with Landis Gog and works its way down. So it, it, it's not it's not simply a conversation of what Landy does on the ice. That's, that's the whole point here. And how, to me, how telling is it that 
if if he's if he gets to market, the teams the teams lining up for Landis Gog. Yeah, you're talking Carolina. You're talking St. Louis, Vegas, Toronto. These are all teams that fancy themselves as Stanley Cup contenders. I... These are all teams that think of themselves as in win now conversations. How are you? And 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 how in the world would you adjust as an organization if you lose this guy? And I think, uh, yeah, adjusting as an organization becomes extremely tough. Not only do you have to replace that player on the ice, but now you're talking about you're going in as a team that is the Stanley Cup favorites, essentially. Odds, I mean, they're the odds-on favorite right now. They're like they are. They are the Which, number one. Take that for whatever you will. Take that for whatever you will, right? But they're they're a top contender in the league, no doubt about that. You're going into that season and you lose your captain, your captain in the prime of his career, a guy that has spent his whole career in Colorado. That would be a significant loss. Not and and like don't get me wrong, obviously the Avs are losing other pieces, but losing someone like a Brandon Saad would absolutely pale in comparison to losing yeah. a Keith locker room piece like Landis Gog. I mean, if you lose Landis Gog, you're probably doubling your efforts to keep Saad. Because we saw that he could probably give 80% of what, maybe 70% of what Landis Gog does on the ice. Functionally play the same role, yeah. And then you're still having to replace Sod in your lineup because now Sod's replacing Landis Gog. But, I mean, that's that's all good and well, whatever that number would be, I don't know. But this this is really like... This is this is an identity crisis kind of moment for an organization. Definitely, and we saw we saw it last year. What did losing Alex Petrangelo do to St. Louis? Like not just the player, but the leadership vacuum. Yeah, they they lost Petrangelo, and now we're sitting in this off season, and they're staring down trading Tarasenko. They're staring down trading Vince Dunn. The, yeah. the team is falling apart. <laughs> They're trying to make a big play for Landeskog, and if you're Landeskog, I don't know why I would go. Why he would go to St. Louis? Yeah, he's going to have suitors who are better, better prepared to give him the same kind of money, but offer him better fit and better, you know, better opportunity to win. Well, and 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 the other side of this, to get back to your original point here, is I do think it's telling that. I guarantee you there will be multiple teams in free agency willing to give Landis Gog long-term deals. There will I mean, there are teams that will absolutely take the chance on the end of that contract in free agency. Yeah. So. I, and look, like you you just don't want to you don't want to make the mistake. Yep. Like you don't want to give him the you don't want to just be like, "Okay, well, what is it what does it matter?" You know, eight years, we'll just give him the eight years, blah, 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 and then year three of that contract, he hits he hits the wall at age 31, and you're like, ugh. Obviously, this is an avalanche podcast, and I think especially a lot of fans of the teams are going to have significant feelings about Landis Gog and wanting him to stay. Not saying this is the universe we live in, but there is absolutely a universe where if Landy doesn't want to take a shorter term deal, not signing him may be the correct move. It, there is a world where that's the case. Yeah, I mean, you have you have a year. Uh, uh, one year from now, the Avalanche will open up negotiations on the next contract for Nathan McKinnon. Yep. So, I'd, for the record, I absolutely think the Avs should find a way to get Landis Cog signed one way or another. We'll get more into how they could potentially do that in a second. He, but uh, Landis Cog can't look at what Rantanen got. They're in. They're incomparable. Rantanen is essentially a point per game player across his career. Landy right. doesn't even sniff that. So right, like Landy has been almost a point per game player for three years. Yeah, but he's been a bit below that, and Rantanen has been significantly above. So and and that's with Rantanen being in his early twenties, right? Like Rant, Rantanen, uh, his Rantanen's point per game pace right now has him headed towards the Hall of Fame if he keeps it up. Yep. 
that's not Landis Cog's future. It's anything close to rant and money would be way too much for Gabe. And and I'm sure Gabe knows that too. So it's, yeah. it's not like he's asking for anything unrealistic there. But we can talk more about that after our first period break as we are brought to you by Breckenridge Brewery, the official beer of DNVR. Contract talks often make me want to drink. So might be a good time to grab <laughs> one right now. <laughs> Go get yourself a Breck brew from the BNBR bar. Or grab a good company hard seltzer from a local liquor store near you. Drink a few to calm the nerves down a little bit on, on the Landis God conversation. Come on down to the bar for the expansion drafts in a couple weeks as well. I guess one week exactly now. So you can uh, watch along with the expansion draft. If you're at home, you can watch us. Of course, we'll be live on stream from the bar hanging out just talking hockey in the expansion draft. It should be a really good time. Hopefully Landy is signed by then, but uh, if not, I'm sure that will be a, a heavy topic of conversation as the expansion draft goes on as well. So we'll be there. Consider signing up for a DNVR membership to help support us to get a free shirt. You get big beers at the bar, all sorts of awesome stuff there. Check out our exclusive content. Uh, yeah. The under lounge, bunch of cool stuff. And you know, while you're at it, you can also grab a Strava Craft Coffee cold brew at the DNVR bar or go online and get 25% off when you use code DNVR25 for your first purchase of Strava. And then when you love it, you can use their subscription service to get 20% off basically for the rest of your life. All right. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. AJ, you mentioned it seems like the the sticking point here appears to be more about the term than anything else. Yeah. Um, it, what? <sighs> what? How far apart are we talking here? Because it, taking a player to thirty five, as you mentioned, is it's legitimately concerning. You have no idea what you're going to get out of that player. So, what what is reasonable? Five years takes him to thirty three. Four years, 32, uh, anything shorter than that, uh, does that start to feel a little offensive to a, a long-term player? You keep in mind what happened in the Artemi Panarin chase a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Colorado offered four years for that. Yeah. So they drew with Artemi Panarin, a player legitimately worth doing something silly for. And part of the reason that they didn't want to go much beyond that was because they knew that they had a new contract for Landis God coming up as one of the guys they wanted to prioritize. Yeah. The, the reality for the Avs is they would probably love to give Landy a four-year deal and then give him another four-year deal. And just kind of string it out like that. Yeah, and and break up the eight year deal in more price appropriate ways. Sure, but I think offering offering somebody who look when the vultures were circling, he he came to you and said, "I want to be part of this." Now he's part of this. He's a huge part of this. He's the face of this. I don't I don't look you can you can use 4 years as a as a negotiating tactic to maybe get it to 5 but you got to But if you you're not your guy here a little bit yeah if you're not willing to go for 6 for a guy that's done everything that he has for the organization I mean they gave 7 to Eric Johnson and that was a different team that was a different time they had different concerns back then, but they're paying for that decision right now because they did give him seven, because they said, hey, screw it. We'll give him what he wants to keep him. Yeah. I... They, they're they paying for that decision now. What If they had given EJ a six-year deal or a five-year deal, how much how, if they given him a five-year deal, how much of a better spot are they in financially right now? Done right now. Yeah. Man. That six million is off your books. Yeah, 
definitely a fair point. It's, uh, but I mean, that's always going to be a tough balancing act, right? Because on the one hand, yeah, you do want to learn from your past mistakes, but it's just so hard with with players that have become the core of this hockey team that you have to be willing to to move a little bit to get it done, right? You, it's it's so hard to draw that line in the sand if if the player wants X, Y, and Z. You have to find a little bit of a, a bridge there, a little bit of, of something in the middle to, to get an agreement done, right? Yeah. And I think... I think you they they should learn from the Paul Stasny thing. Mm -hmm. And look, they were in a uniquely they were in a unique position when Paul Stasny left. Sure. Because when Paul Stasny left, they had Matt Duchesne, Ryan O'Reilly, and Nathan McKinnon all on their roster. Plenty of centers to go over. There was a reason that Paul Stasny got to that market and the reason that the Avs drew the, the line in the sand that they did, and they were very they were rough on that one. That's all good and well. That's a that's a that's a different situation, but you also look that was a team that won the division, lost Paul Stasny, and didn't even come close the next year. Yep. Uh one question I did want to hit here from Daniel says Matt Kalen Rands get top billing. How is he the face? We've talked about this on the show before, but go look at who does the interviews, especially after an Avs loss. Yeah. Who's the guy that's standing up and talking to everybody after every loss? Who's the guy that sets the tone in that locker room? You may not know that, but I do. And the answer is Gabe Landeskog. He is he is the man in that room. He is the he is the parent. He's the adult. He's king shit. He's the guy. Our man Evan here saying, "Don't hate on Landy for trying to maximize his money. You only hit UFA one time in your prime, which is absolutely true. Never, never hate on him. I'm never going to hate on a player for trying to get paid. Yep. Never." That is never going to be a thing that I do. It's been a very long battle in the NHL for players to get as much control of signing their contracts as they have now. Yep. And there's an argument that they deserve more control than they have already. A good argument, in my opinion. But I mean, our look, ELCs are great for teams, but they are super exploitative. Yep. So we don't need to we don't we don't need to be That's getting into the labor whole argument can of worms yeah. There. yeah for sure not not super related yeah. to the land is gone, that our, that that last comment is is the important one this is about the organization and yeah. look they the, the, look, landy hasn't left yet you know we got to, we got to uh, we got to to push push shove time when it came to miko rantanen too they went through the entire preseason before they before they got that thing ready to go. Miko ranted and showed up two days before opening night, and then you know? off. But and you know, why is why is Gabe Landeskog the face of the franchise? Who met Rantanen in the in the parking lot after Rico signed? He showed up. Yep. Who was it? Who I wasn't Nathan McKinnon. <laughs> yeah, it's. There is a reason for it, right? He, Gabe, has engraved him, engraved, sure, close enough, ingrained himself into the culture of this team so deeply that I think it's it's very difficult for anyone to see this team without him at this point. Um, you've built a team with him leading it that, can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? It, it, do they get there? Do they not? Obviously, you have to wait and see. They have to prove it. But a lot of Gabe Landeskog's years here have not been the best. Yeah. Their most success that they've had been the last three years. Yep. So it just it just feels a little bit dirty to even consider not maintaining him as a part of the team when it's finally to a point where it should be competing for the top of the league. Yeah. And look, I don't, I, we've heard privately, we've heard speculation about what the numbers are being bandied about. I don't know how true any of that is. So I don't really want to 
get into the specifics or anything. Sure. I don't want to get super into the nuts and bolts of things that may not be accurate. I'd look, I mean, um, what we know for sure is that Landy wants term, right? Yeah. So that's the pretty easy sticking point at the moment. Yeah. Where the where the money might fall, the money might fall. It's as far as that's concerned. I mean, look, yes, you have to draw a hard line somewhere with term and money, but outside of this is the thing is that this is the guy you pay. Like right, exactly. Like and we'll have this conversation a year from now when we get into the when we get into the McKinnon stuff and his extension and how much can they really pay him and you know blah 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 blah, right? Like we're going to get we're going to have a really interesting Nathan McKinnon conversation next week. Um it's not ownership. Any I know I know people hate the Cronkies, but They've always it's, been willing to spend on the ads. It's never the, been a problem. Yeah. Exactly. There's not a luxury tax concern like there is in the NBA, which is where they have been really careful about not wasting money on luxury teams that weren't very good in the NBA. The 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 ads have been given money when they've when they've been when they've felt that they could justify it. Yep. The forty eight point team was a cap team. Mind you. So yep. They, they, this is not an organization that is being brought back as uh, being hamstrung by its ownership. That's not what's happening here. This is an organ. This is this is the hockey people are concerned about aging curves, and they're concerned about overpaying for that, and they just kind of, you know, they they just they haven't hashed it out yet to a point that is amenable to both sides. Yeah. <laughs> I like, has there ever been a case where a captain left a Stanley Cup caliber team as a UFA? Just curious. How do you feel about the Blues? <laughs> yeah. I, there's a handful of other ones, aren't there? I'm off of my head. Can't. So remember exactly but yes it, it definitely does happen where, where a captain will will dip out of a, a high-end caliber team but yeah i mean brian with a great point sackick signed an offer, an offer sheet. sheet it was matched of course but you know and that was after that team uh, that team had won a cup yep they would win another but you know um uh, yeah so it's it's I tough do- I do think I do think the comment from Anna earlier is correct, though. I think that the expansion draft is also playing a role in this. Uh, and I mean, then yeah. again, they if they if they protect Landis Cog, Seattle can't talk to him. Nobody can talk to him until he's a free agent on the twenty eighth. The legal tampering period is gone. That's a thing that the league got rid of. I don't totally know why. Teams are just going to do it anyway, but that's a different conversation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. Um, but that's it is what it is. They they're not legally allowed. Yep. Um. But I mean, look, knowing just, knowing what happens in expansion will help them. Well, and and look at it. It's not like. The abs are sitting here, and the only thing they have to do is sign Landeskog, right? The org has a lot of things on their plate. Landeskog, Makar, Grubauer, dealing with whatever they want to do with Brandon Saad, the yeah. expansion draft, the entry draft. Yeah. And, and and branches come out from that, right? We've talked about teams having interest in Ryan Graves surrounding the expansion draft. There's a lot of stuff going on for not just the abs, but every team in the NHL right now. Yeah. So... I'm not saying Landeskog isn't their priority, but as AJ was talking about, there may be an order of operations here where if the Avs get some other things done, then they have a better idea of where they stand and they can come back to that table with Landeskog with X, Y, or Z. I think the number one thing that has to get done is Seattle has to take a player. Yeah. 
because that gives them a better idea of how much money they have. Yeah, and you know, would they, would the Avs try and trade uh, their first round pick, for example, to Seattle to say, hey, we're going to trade you our first round pick and JT Comfer, you'll take Jonas Donskoy, or you you'll take your, you'll take Ryan Graves, and that frees up seven plus million for the abs that way instead of three and a half or whatever right and but then they lose the, you know seattle gets a first round pick and they get two nhl players that are free agents after two years yep you know then guys that can be in their lineup easily um does colorado want to do that do they want to give up the first is seattle okay with that does Seattle want two firsts, knowing that right. it's doing Colorado a huge solid? All speculation there, for sure. You know, if they're going to attach a first, I mean, would you trade two firsts to do that, and then also Eric Johnson? The, the branching paths spiral out of control when you're all just when it's all speculation about. Yeah, and then because now you know you you do that now you've cleaned up twelve million. Now you now you can sign Landis Cog and Taylor Hall. Go crazy. <laughs> sign whoever you want. I um, just I I mean I think that the I'm I'm continually surprised that this is not done. Yeah. But with the when the pandemic kicked in and the cap went flat, it really threw a huge monkey wrench into all of this. Yep. It really, it seriously screwed with all of this. Yep. Because it made uh, almost con <laughs> every contract signed since the knowledge of the flat cap has either had a concession on the player side in money or term. One of the two. Would it? Would it have even been fathomable? I don't think so. It, yeah, if if the cap had continued to go up, Landy would have been signed months ago, right? Like, I mean, a year ago, a year and a half ago, pre-pandemic, would it have been fathomable that Ryan Nugent Hopkins signed for five million dollars? No, not a chance in the world. Like that dude, was he's gonna seven on the open market easily. Like he's, he's gonna take a million dollar pay cut on a long term deal, like it. It's a crazy world, man. Yeah. yeah, with the cap not going up, it really hurt Colorado. Yeah. Because the cap going up would have paid for Kale McCarr pretty much on its own. Mm -hmm. Now, now you know, they – how are they the, the trying to balance between having to pay these guys and then – And maintaining their cup window by not – putting themselves in cap hell by not yeah. spending a lot of money on guys that end up aging out of their curve. Yep. That's basically the conversation around Landis. Right. Dog. You're trying to, you're trying to pay these guys to compete for a cup while keeping a cup competing caliber roster. Yep. You know, like around them. So, uh. yeah. I mean, sometimes to get the contract done, you have to put your balls on the table. And if you're going to do that in a contract no negotiation, they better look good. So head on over to Manscaped. Use code DNBR20 to get 20% off. Get the perfect package 4.0, which includes the new lawnmower 4.0. Get your package ship shape. Get top dollar on your contract when you use Manscaped to shave your junk great products as well they have a bunch of other awesome stuff outside the perfect package including things like breast mints deodorant shave mats shavers for your face you name it they can take care of all of the body hair and other things that you need to take care of when it comes to your body also brought to y'all by DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one rated sportsbook app out there. You can download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and head on over with a new account. Use code DNVR when you sign up to get a chance to win $150 in site credit for betting $1. Just pick one of the two NBA teams left. That's the Suns from Phoenix and the Bucks from Milwaukee. Pick one of them to win and you get 150 bucks for a $1 bet on a new account only. I, I don't know why you wouldn't do this. It's a great opportunity to get yourself a ton of money over on DraftKings to play around with. But 
if basketball is not your thing, of course, you can also bet on any other sport under the sun, especially with the Olympics coming up very soon. Should be a lot of fun bets going on there with DraftKings. So check them out. Download that top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the DNBR code when you sign up for a new account for that awesome bet. Uh, again, bet on a basketball team of your choice to win their next game. And if they do, you get $150 in free credit. Uh, limited time only. DraftKings Sportsbook only. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook. For details, gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And check out Solace Mets when you come on down to the DNVR bar. There's a location just a couple blocks away from the bar. You can also get it up in Fort Collins, Wheat Ridge, and another location in Denver. You can get 20% off with them when you use code DNVR20 online. Get it set up for pickup. Get in, get out super quick. Get to what you need. You can also shop in store if you'd like. They have various discounts ranging from 10 to 25% on a number of products. Check them out today. They also regularly have specials for holidays and things like that. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. We have a super chat here from Spence. Say the Avs offseason looks like this. Lose Sod, Graves, Comfort, Landeskog, Add Kachuk, Reinhardt, Suter, Hall. Uh, do you think that's a net neutral? <laughs> kind of give up on the Taylor Hall thing. It's not happening. Yeah, definitely not happening. Um, we've talked quite a bit about potentially replacing Landis Gog with a Kachuk or Reinhardt type of player on the, uh, again, on the ice. Yeah. I I do think you're probably getting a very similar type of player with Kachuk, probably a better player, honestly, based on pure ability. But again, that doesn't take into account the off ice effect. The fact that Landis Gog was the captain of this team, the face of the franchise, as far as in front of the media, at very least, and, and it creates a situation where they have to make a decision about who their future captain is going to be. Yeah, not only that, but Mac and Chuck's contract is up in a year. Right. It, it's you're going to give that guy $9 million the, yeah. the same year that you're going to give McKinnon whatever he needs. Like, that goes in. And, well, and then there's the, you know, the... The, the the cost of actually acquiring him. Right. There's and then a lot of extraneous factors there, sure. Yeah, like okay. It's jumping through a lot of hoops because you don't want to give a twenty eight year old a couple more years of term. Yeah. You could just do this and keep the face of your franchise. You could just give him the sixth year or whatever and just be done with it. You don't have to make it more complicated than it needs to be, right? That's the that's the simple part. Uh, thank you for the super chat. He also says this is my plan B, not the teams necessarily. So, uh, yeah, it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's not an easy situation by any means. It's complicated. It's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of things to juggle. Yeah, it's. I think that's where the rub is, man, is that they, if they were just trying to do Landeskog, they, okay, great, but they get, they get Landeskog done and they turn around and they have to worry about the entire league trying to offer Sheet Cal McCarr just yep. to stick it to him. Yep. Now, I'm not, I, I am a, I have said a million times offer sheets aren't <laughs> real or particularly meaningful, but this would be a situation and I, you know, we always talk about it. Teams don't do this. This would be a situation where a team should get predatory and try and take advantage of that. The one thing I will say about offer sheets, especially this year, I think you're going to see a lot of teams talking with Seattle about trading picks relevant to offer sheets. So there might not be a lot of teams out there with the assets to do it. Yeah, that's true. But Nonetheless, but speaking of trading for picks, okay. Let me. If, if Colorado does not, Colorado and Landeskog don't come to a deal. Do you deal his rights? I mean, if you are, say we get through the expansion draft, yeah. you through the entry draft, 
We are through the end of next weekend. I'm already back in Canada. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. If you're at that point, they haven't signed. If the Avs have said, look, this is the maximum that they're willing to give Landeskog, and Landeskog says no, so they're basically locked into them not signing him, sure. Get a sixth round pick, fifth round pick, whatever for him. Great. But that should be absolute last resort territory, I think. I wouldn't even have that on my radar. It shouldn't be an option until you have no other option. Okay. I agree. This should it should be in no way an attractive offer. Correct. Yeah. But if you know you're gonna lose them. Right. Do you play chicken with get a second round pick back or he hits the open market and you're hoping that he does what Stamkos does? Because as far I, as I know, Stamkos is the only big time free agent that is in the open market. Yeah. He's mean, the only one that I can remember in recent years of guys who hit the open market and stayed. And that's you and I can't really make an effective decision there, right? The Avs are going to have talks directly with Landis Gog. They're going to know where he stands going into UFA if he does go into it. Mm -hmm. And they'll have to make a decision based on how they feel about it. So we saw, we saw the Islanders make this gamble. You know, they, they, and, and look, does, did, are the Islanders significantly better with a second, an extra second round pick because they moved him at the very end or whatever? Um, I don't know, but, you know, the fact that he just walked for nothing was problematic for them. Yep. It, it lost value is lost value, right? No matter what. No, Stamkos hit the open market. Yep. He was he on was, the open market. He was part of the 21 minutes of insanity that day on July 1st where P.K. Subban and, uh, got traded and uh, Adam Larson and Taylor Hall got traded. And, and then he stayed in Tampa. Yeah, yeah and then St- and Stamkos, Stamkos signed. Did the boring thing, yeah. Yeah. So that was also during the tampering period. Yes. So he had been talking to teams. I guess if he didn't technically hit the open market, he knew what the market was going to pay him. Yeah. There were offers on the table. Yeah. Um. So he was part of that whole that whole chaos. That was a legendary day. I was working at Airbnb. <laughs> Uh, that day, because that that was the summer that I got that as my, uh, I got it as a side gig. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> and I was I was at Airbnb just watching on Twitter while all that happened. I was like this freaking is, out. Yeah. I was like, man, this is really this is a lot of fun to watch. This is really <laughs> chaotic. <laughs> Hopefully, the Avs are planning to avoid something that chaotic. But uh, so- yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a it's a tough it's it's they have a really chaotic road to in the next two weeks but this Landeskog thing should have been should have been the layup of the group I and that it's already at this point it's just so it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good no getting well I'll let you, I'll let you ask it the super chat from Tyler here could you entice Seattle with EJ because they have to hit the cap floor. Obviously, it depends on who else they take, but it could help. Seattle will have no trouble hitting the cap floor. Yeah. All you have to do, this was something that I thought was going to matter a lot in the last one, and then I totally didn't account for the fact that they have to take 30 players. Yeah. And even if they take a handful of free agents that they have no intention of signing, it's it's and, not hard to hit to, the cap. You're not hit, taking 30 yeah. $1 million players. To hit the cap floor, it's less than $2 million a player and at 30 players. So you you end up taking one big name. Like, if they I'm rumored Matt Duchesne going to be available, if they get Duchesne at $8 million, I, it's virtually impossible for them to not hit the cap floor from there. <laughs> like, um, however, there's still a world where the abs could entice Seattle to take EJ. Yeah. 
if that happens to all of them, uh, there there should not be. Look, if they if they find any way uh, to move Eric Johnson's contract out, they should. You just pony up and pay people, yeah. Give whatever year and, and just be like, look, we'll give you six years, okay? We don't want to give you eight. We'll give you six. Sure. Yeah. It, at that point, it's just get done what you need to get done, right? Yeah. It's not like you're you're really tight up for anything. But Seattle should sign Dougie. Sure. Why not? Tell you what, uh, if Landeskog if Landeskog walks and he goes and signs with the Hurricanes, Colorado can sign Dougie. <laughs> Sam Jordan, Dougie Hamilton is your second pairing. All right, all right. We know you love Dougie. Calm it down. I do love Dougie. <laughs> I do. Uh, so let's let's kind there of start to put Final a bow on that one. Yeah. Will Landy be in an avalanche sweater next season? Kyle skipped 47 minutes of the show and cut right to the heart of it. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I think this gets done. I think he will, too. I, th- I, I think this is a lot of posturing. I think this is just what happens in these situations. Again, I'm disappointed that, that the organization let it get here. Um, yeah. It does feel like it's taken too long, but at the end of the day, I think they end up in the same place. Yeah, I just think that I think it would it would be really, really, really hard for me to see a world where Joe Sackick lived through the playing career that he did, and then to turn around and just Not let a guy a like Gabe Landeskog just yeah. leave. Yep. So, uh, panic, panic time, Brad. Panic time is when Landis Scott can talk to other teams legally. So if the Avs don't protect him on the list and he can talk to Seattle, panic time is is Sunday. If it's none of that and, you know, blah, 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 then panic time is the 28th and the night of the 27th. Because I don't think I would sleep that night if he's unsigned. And our free agency show is just going to be us sitting there going like this Panicking, the whole time. waiting for Lane Scott to sign somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully it does not come to that for our own heart health, if nothing else. Also, Evan should Evan should know this, and I'm sure he does, but just because he's pushing 30 doesn't mean he's going to go by Doug. He was born Dougie. He's named Dougie, like his brother is Freddy. They aren't nicknames. They were named that. Their parents did that to them. Change your name to Douglas, just to spite them. Man. Could you... Could you... <laughs> he goes through ten years in the NHL as Dougie, and then he's like... I'm Douglas now. Now that I've hit 30, they call me Douglas. That's right. <laughs> okay. On that note, we're going to get out of here for the day. Thank you, everyone, for watching, listening, however you consume. Be sure to like and subscribe here on YouTube. I see a lot of you in here today for the Landis Gog Panic. So liking and subscribing helps us out <laughs> a ton on YouTube. Uh, if you hit the notification bell, you can get every time we go live if you want that. We will be back tomorrow. Maybe we'll talk draft. Maybe there'll be more breaking news. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> we, our whole plan, last week, expansion draft. This week, entry draft. And we did we did the interview with Will on Monday, and then we haven't really. We, it's just been news There's of the day. Other stuff that we've had yeah. to talk about. Yep. Brian Suter, and then this. Yep. So either there'll be. I more. don't know. I don't know what tomorrow's coming. It's yeah. gonna be. Who knows? Who knows what uh, what news breaks tomorrow? But you can find us here, going live 1 p.m. Mountain Time. <laughs> uh, we hope to see you in the chat, or you know, at least listen in to the podcast after the fact until then we'll talk to you all later